And so I think it's important that you understand the clinical trial process. I'm not saying that the pill is bad. I just want you to think about how to make health decisions for yourself. You want to be especially vigilant, especially staying on top of it. Once I got the information I needed, I started to move in that direction about how to make health decisions for yourself. In your mind, what would you say to brothers that's, um, that's not vaccinated or just people in general? I'm glad to hear you are protected and thanks for being so honest here on Keeping It 100 because that's what we do. Okay. Hi, hi everybody. Welcome to Keeping It 100. My daughter just told me something and just threw me off. But I'm going to pull myself together. I'm back. Welcome to Keeping It 100 where we have these open and honest conversations and make sure you have all the information you need to make good, good quality health decisions for yourself and for your family. I'm Dr. Krista Motley. And as always, we have a really good show in store for you. If you think of questions, pop them in the chat. We will make sure they get answered. Let me bring in the street practitioner himself, Mr. Georgie Mink Jr. <coughs> Excuse me. How you doing? <laughs> What's up? Hey, Doc. What's going on? How you living? I'm great. I'm in the building. How you doing, Doc? She is in the building. I'm good. You know, I actually went away this weekend. We had a, a little weekend excursion to Brooklyn. Nice. My first time going to Brooklyn and staying for a couple of days. Black Brooklyn was everything. Wow. It was nice. We had a really, really good time. Wow. Nice, Doc. Okay. How how about you? Uh, I had a great week. Did you do anything? Yeah, I had a great weekend. It just was simple and plain, you know. Um, but um, yeah, great. I didn't go to Brooklyn. <laughs> I didn't leave the state. I didn't you leave didn't the block, leave the but country. it's cool. I just did got some rest and that's important, you know, right? That's but yeah, how, how you feeling? Are you good? I'm good. I'm good. Thanks. Nice. Thanks. I'm nice. ready. I'm ready. I'm good. I'm ready. I'm ready let's, with you. Let's hop right into you know, speaking of black, black Brooklyn. Let's hop right into our Black History moment. Oh yeah, that's a street that's practitioner. Me. Okay, that's on what me. you got for us this week? All right, so I got a great lady, great woman. You know what I mean, I'm getting ready to uh, turn my camera off so we can get her picture up, and we're going to honor uh, Jane Cook Wright. Um, she was born in 1919. Uh, she passed away at 20 2013. Uh, she's the daughter of one of the first black American graduates of Har Harvard Medical School, uh, Jane Crook Wright. She grew up in with an avid interest in health care. Her father, Dr. Lewis Wright, was also the first black doctor appointed to a staff position at Municipal Hospital in New York City. And in 1929, the city hired him as a police surgeon, the first African-American to hold that position. After earning her medical degree, Dr. Jane Cook Wright worked alongside her father at the Cancer Research Foundation in Harlem, which her father established in 1948. Together, father and daughter researched chemotherapy drugs that led to remissions in patients with leukemia and lymphoma. In 1952, when her father died of tuberculosis, Wright became the head of the Cancer Research Foundation at age 33. Wow. She created an initiative, an initiative technique to test the effect of drugs of cancer cells by using patient tissue rather than laboratory mice. She advanced to work as the director of cancer chemotherapy at New York, Run, New York Run University Medical Center, and she was an associate dean at New York Medical College. Wow. And she's very important. The New York Cancer Society elected Wright as its first woman president in 1991. Her research helped transform chemotherapy from last resort to a viable treatment for cancer. Wow. So major doc, major stuff. That's incredible. And I and I and I was reading about her when you sent me her name. Her grandfather is also one of the first African American physicians in the yeah in the US too. So she comes from a line of um 
people, dad and grandfather and herself who broke barriers for us and for people like us to, you know, do work in healthcare. And it's just really incredible. Really incredible. You're on mute, Jay. Because yeah, I had a lot to say about her. Um, I was amazed that she was a part of chemotherapy, like the like the process way back then. Yeah. I didn't know like like that's crazy that she even was a part of that whole that that whole movement, like and, or just the process for chemotherapy way back then. Like so, wow, man, we we big doc, we big doc. We and she was doing a big thing. Yeah, she was a female doctor. So listen, Doc. So kudos. You got you gotta give her props today, Doc. You gotta give Absolutely. her Absolutely. Yeah. Let's give her a hand. I did class. good on picking this one too, Doc. What you say? I did great on picking this one. She was a great one. Oh, you always do good. Yeah. yeah That's yeah. why you in charge of the Black History Month, Mom. Yeah, you know. Because I know I could count on you. You next, through. Doc. You next Doc. <laughs> no, that's all good. That's all good. Um, but yeah, so um, I really thank all of the people that paved the way for people like me and us to, you know, become healthcare providers, because there was a time where we could not go to school to become physicians and pharmacists and nurses. They wouldn't let us in their schools. Mm -hmm. And so it took a lot of resistance. I know that the theme for this year's Black History Month is Black resistance. It took a lot of resistance from people in our community, from people who supported our community, for us to get to where we are today. We, we have a lot to do. We have a long way to go to bring our numbers up in terms of black healthcare providers. But, you know, we, we're we gonna get there and we're gonna get the work done. And I'm just really grateful for everyone that broke down the barriers to allow a path for me to do the kind of work that I do and for us to be in the community and helping and serving. It's, it's incredible. Yes, yes. Very unfortunate. So thanks for bringing attention to her, to her story, to her family, to their contribution, especially the cancer. We know that African-Americans die at higher rates for certain cancers. Um, and so their advances, their discoveries, you know, have, I'm, I'm sure have been improved along the way. And it's really made a difference in our lives, in our, in our community's lives. Yeah, definitely. Doc. Awesome. Awesome. Good, good pick. Yeah, I good think pick, so. Yeah, wow. <laughs> so we're also um, honoring American Heart Month, and I want to remind you all that heart disease is real. More Black people die of heart disease than any other race, so we have to take this seriously. And for a lot of us, it starts with having high blood pressure. High blood pressure doesn't have any symptoms. You have to get your blood pressure checked to know your numbers, and so that's really important. We think about COVID in terms of blood pressure and heart disease. We know that people that have heart disease have a higher risk of having worse COVID, um, COVID symptoms, hospitalizations, have a higher risk of dying, and they have a higher risk of having long COVID. So we know that heart disease is more prevalent in the Black community. More of us die from heart disease. If you, if you get COVID and you have heart disease, you have a higher risk of dying, have a high uh, long COVID. So one thing we can do to protect ourselves is really making sure we're vaccinated and up to date on boosters. I had mentioned before that people that are dying now of COVID are older people, 65 and up, um, who do not have the latest booster. So we got to stay up to date on vaccines, make sure we get vaccinated, stay up to date on the boosters. And, you know, we got it. I mean, that's the best we can do because the government is, is about to start paying for all this, all this, all this fun they're about to get wrapped right on up. So we got to take advantage of these things now so that um, our people can be protected in the long term. Um, I got one thing, Doc, before we yeah, go. Yeah, yeah. I heard on the news that even yeah. after they stopped uh, giving out free um, testing and everything related to COVID, whatever, Moderna is still going to continue to still be free. So you can That's confirm that. Here. You can confirm that. Just make I'm sure you, you can do it while we you confirm it while we on the air. But I'm I, did, to it. I did hear it on the news that Moderna is still going to continue to still give people um, free free vaccinations. They're probably going to do it for people. I mean, I would think they would do it for people who don't have insurance because people who do have insurance, they're going to hit them insurance companies up. For real. Oh, sure. But right. or people that don't have insurance, that's the people who we worry about the most because. Mm -hmm. People don't, they can't afford to pay out of pocket. I right. know 
Moderna, when they first started talking about how much they were going to charge, it was like $110 per vaccine, like per mm-hmm. shot. And you right. got to get two and three shots sometimes. So that that's that's a lot of money and people that don't have insurance won't, you know, may not be able to afford to pay that. And so I would definitely hope that they do have a plan to cover people who don't have insurance because people that do have insurance will be, will be protected by their insurance. And hopefully they will waive all co-pays that insurance plans won't make us pay co-pays for COVID vaccines because we don't do it for any other vaccines. Um, Vaccines are considered preventative care, and under the Affordable Care Act from o- Obamacare, pre- preventative care you don't pay for if you have insurance. So hopefully, people that have insurance won't have copays. People who don't have insurance, the pharmaceutical industry will step up and make sure they're covered, and that will be a good thing to do. Mm-hmm. So thanks for letting me know. But I'll, I'm gonna look into that. Yeah, I know. I know you will, Doc. Just, I don't just, believe just in nothing. <laughs> it's not fake right news. It's not, it's not fake news, Doc. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure they have a pr- pr- press release about it. So I'm gonna go and and see what they have said. Okay, copy. But thank you for letting me know that. Mm-hmm. All right. So speaking of um, COVID and heart health, um, we know that this month is American Heart Month, and so this month each week we did a heart segment and so this is the last week of the month so we're going to close it out with today's guest nurse stacia gray stacia is a mom she's a grandma and she is dedicated and works with so much compassion she's a licensed practical nurse she has been for over 15 years nice. she's been working in the healthcare community particularly in the Delaware County region for over 25 years. Wow. She's worked in geriatric and rehabilitation medicine. She knows what she's doing. She, she, she got the skills to pay the bill. She's already. done a lot of work <laughs> in cardiac evaluation and monitoring patients with heart conditions. Um, and she really strives to be an advocate in her community and bringing attention to important health matters like heart disease. I actually met Stacia a few weeks ago because we did a COVID vaccine clinic at her church. A really nice event that she organized, health fair event that she organized for her members. Um, and so it was really nice to meet her and talk to her. And I was like, I got a podcast. Yeah. I'm a podcast. So thank you, thank you, thank you, Stacia, so for making awesome. this stuff available. That's so awesome. I'm so happy and excited to be here with you. Hoping you can hear me well now. Yes. Yep. Okay, great, great. Yep. So um, just want to just kick off. I know we talked a little bit about this and which really made me want to um, have you on the show. But can you talk a little bit about why heart disease is so important? To- you muted, muted Doc. Because I'm talking to Bria, telling her to move away from me. Because she's oh. hitting the computer, she's balling up paper, she's oh. like, oh. I have a Bria too. <laughs> oh, you do have a Bria. Your Bria got her kids vaccinated at the clinic. That yep. was amazing. Oh, baby so girl, kids. she was going that, through it too. <laughs> <laughs> that was amazing. You know, that really warmed my heart because yeah, I was waiting did. for people to come by. You know, I've been hoping that people will get their first and second doses. And I hadn't seen any in a couple of months. And she came in with the yeah. kids for their first dose. And that just like made my whole existence. I'm like, okay, I got to keep doing this. Doc, um, where the pictures at? We, got the, we ain't got the pick. We I wasn't have, ready. I wasn't ready. We don't have to pick. It's <laughs> you fine. have to keep doing this. Yeah. Right. Okay. So cool. why, so why is so, heart disease topic important to you, Stacia? So it's so important to me because I had, I have a brother. He was 44 years old. Um, his name is Steven. Steven I think we have a picture. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And that's mm. him. And he, um, he had high blood pressure for many years. Um, and when he was 44 years old, he looked healthy. Um, in fact, he would get up and run in the morning and he died in his sleep mm. from hypertensive heart disease. Wow. And it hit me like a ton of bricks because um what may have been the last day that we you know all seen him 
um, saw him walking into my house and I thought, hmm, he looked a little puffy. Hmm. But I, I didn't, it didn't register. I did, I didn't think it out. I just, I, it was a thought. I saw him like, hmm, he looked a little chubby. And that was it. But he was probably at the beginning stage of heart failure. Hmm. And then when he went, and you know, got in the bed. Most likely, he um, he did know something was wrong because I found the bag. We found the bag of of medication in his car that he had just got filled, but the bag was still stapled from the pharmacy. But it was all blood pressure. It was all heart medicine. <sighs> so, you know the 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 toll that the the blood pressure takes on our hearts. Um, we really, because we can't see what's going on, you know, we have so, so many of us have high blood pressure. I mean, it's the leading cause of death in the United States and, you know, heart disease is not just blood pressure. Heart disease is the leading cause of death. And in African-Americans, the numbers are like crazy, just crazy. And so it's, it's so important for us to take it serious and it just doesn't it doesn't always appear that we are that we take it serious enough i mean um when somebody says 30 percent of us are more likely to die from from heart disease it should be something that we are very we are wide awake about that we are very concerned about and we just we just we we want to eat what we want to eat. We want to do what we want to do. And we want to live what we think is life. Um, but unfortunately, eating what we want to eat, it, it just doesn't, it doesn't do our heart any good. And so that's why I'm, I'm very passionate about, um, you know, blood pressure and why it's so important. I, I don't want anybody to, I mean, I, I so many every 36 to 39 seconds someone dies from heart disease but some of these deaths could be prevented and that's the goal it's like if i can if i can encourage you to check your blood pressure take your medicine because a lot of people have medicine and they don't take it they just say oh, i'm not taking that you know you know i'm just not i don't want that i don't want to do that i want to try this and which is nothing so that is that is why I am passionate about it and um I want to continue on and in the month of February this was the first year that you know I put together that heart health um fair um and it will not be the last I will, I will continue to do it because it is the perfect time to talk about the ways that we can improve in our our health in, in our communities. That's true. And I appreciate you for coming on and talking about your personal experience with your brother and heart disease. And I am totally feeling your passion to keep this going because for a lot of us, um, heart disease starts with high blood pressure. Just like you said, and, and high blood pressure is a silent killer. People don't know that they have it. And we talk about, you know, we try to talk about this. You don't know it if you don't get your numbers checked. And for a lot of people, it's it's too late. You're in the hospital because you had a heart attack. Um, and yeah. so we want to do as much as we can to pre prevent this um, from killing us because it kills our people at numbers like crazy. I'm going to try to get a chart over um, for Leslie to put up because I was in the presentation last week. And in the presentation, they were talking about um, drugs that are used to treat heart failure, blah, blah, blah. But one of the slides is, had showed the rate of heart disease in by race. And when you get to mm. black people, it like jumped. It it jumped so high for black men that it is like, I am so tired of looking at these statistics. We have got yeah. to do better. And it's not all on us. It's not all on us. It's not all on our, our habits and what we're doing. It's on the medical community too. We have to, a, we have to address the racism within the healthcare industry that causes our health outcomes to be worse than other groups. So it's, we have a role 
and the healthcare industry has a role. And if we can get it together on both sides, I think we'll be, we'll do much better, but we, we, we have to, we have to acknowledge that the healthcare industry has some racist, um, uh, racist, uh, the, the way that black people are, are cared for within the hospitals, yeah. within the doctor's office sometimes. And it's not intentional. It's the unconscious racism that can um, cause these uh, differences in care that you see between different racial groups. So the training right. and we'll, we'll other things. That 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 I'm sorry, Tasha, what'd you say? You do see it a lot. When you work in healthcare, you see it a lot. And they really don't even realize what what they're doing. Yeah, the no. decisions that they make on a mm -hmm. daily basis, um, how it is racism. Mm -hmm. They don't, you know, they don't see that until it's pointed out to them. So unfortunately, they don't want to hear it, but we have to speak up. We do. We absolutely do. Now, can we talk a little bit about the numbers, Stacia? So we know when we're looking at Blood pressure, we're usually looking at two numbers, the top number and right, the right. bottom number. Can you just explain what the differences are between those two numbers? So the top number, that's the systolic number. That's the systolic blood pressure. And that's the number that it gets all of the attention because it is the number that's looked at that could signify if you're having like a stroke or if you're on your way to having a stroke, or if you're on your way to having some type of heart um, condition, mm. some cardiovascular disease. Um, so that is measuring the force of the of the, the blood flowing through your artery when your heart beats. Yeah. That's what it's measuring. That's what it's measuring. And then the bottom number is measuring when it when it stops, when it pauses, when it when it rests rather, because it doesn't stop, it just rests. It just, your heart's just, so the bottom number is measuring the the pressure or the force of the blood when your heart rests in between the beat, mm. in between the beat. And so both of the numbers, both of the numbers are, can indicate health problems. Not that the bottom number can't indicate health problems, um, I, it, they both indicate health problems, but the top number um, is really what doctors, you know, we are, you know, they are very concerned about. And you did a Black History moment, and I wrote down her name, Jane Cook Wright. Mm -hmm. um, but I like to, uh, I like to tell you something that about the the blood pressure um, machines, the computerized ones. So we take blood pressures with the stethoscope and, you know, the um, blood pressure cuff mm -hmm. around the arm. But it's a black man named Michael Crossland. Wow. Who invented, wow. He, inv he invented the uh, computerized blood pressure device called the MedTech. Wow. MedTech 410 and 420. And, wow. and, you know, we love to take blood pressures with the test stethoscope and the, the cuff, but um, he invented this blood pressure machine and they are still using these machines in different ways in the hospitals. You don't, you don't, you don't see doctors and nurses really checking your pressure with mm -hmm. the stethoscope and the mm -hmm. blood pressure cuff. It's the okay. automatic thing that goes on your arm and it puffs up and it checks the rate of your blood, the force of your blood, what's your blood doing in the arteries? So it made the, the monitoring of patients and monitoring of your medical conditions um, and the diagnosing actually of uh, cardiovascular diseases um, really helpful. This was a black man that invented that. Wow. And even today, a lot of people, they'll say those things don't work. It's hard not to not to think that that's why they say that, right? Because mm. a black man invented it. Wow, wow! It's I hard not to that think too. that. Yeah. Oh, they don't work, but they use them in the hospitals. Wow. So, um, they do work. You know, it depends on the. You know, it depends on a number of things. 
Um, but it it helps us take our blood pressures at home. You can't check your own blood pressure mm -hmm. without it's without a without important. that type of device. Exactly, exactly. And that, so that that's very life. important. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it's saving lives. So for people that check their blood mm -hmm. pressure at home, they know their numbers, they can call their doctor and say, hey, yeah. my blood pressure is up. What should I do? When you're not doing that, you don't know. And the next time you're going to find out that your blood pressure up, you may be on your way to the hospital in the ambulance. And so using those devices, critical, critical. I know you sent some information about um, blood pressure numbers. Let's take a look at the oh, yeah. chart so you can go over the numbers and let us know what these numbers mean. Yep. So the, the blood pressure categories, um, normal blood pressure, the systolic number would be less than 120 and the diastolic would be less than 80. So 120 over 80 is normal. But yep. anything over 120 over 80 122 over 84 that's elevate a elevated blood pressure yeah and it could be from stress it could be from different things but it's an elevated blood pressure and it used to be uh 120 over 80 used to be considered uh you know one, even up to 130 used to be considered normal but mm -hmm. that's changed mm -hmm. 130 now <laughs> over anything from 80 up is high blood pressure, mm -hmm. is stage one hypertension. And 140 or higher, over 90 or higher is stage two hypertension, is mm -hmm. high blood pressure. And on the day of that uh, heart health fair, we checked blood pressures and someone had a blood pressure of above 140 over mm. 90. Mm -hmm. That's common. And he said, yes. And he said, yes, I didn't take my medicine. Mm. I didn't take my medicine. So if you if you have high blood pressure, you, you, you want to remember to take your medicine and you want to be monitoring your blood pressure. But if when you monitor your blood pressure, you ever have a blood pressure higher than 180 over 120, that's really high. That's very concerning. The yeah. chart says it's hypertensive crisis, that you need to consult your doctor immediately. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I would take it again. I would sit down for a few minutes and yep. take it yep. again to make sure, is that right? <laughs> but I wouldn't wait too long. I would mm -hmm. call the doctor. If I'm not if I'm not having chest pain or if I'm not having or any other symptoms, but if you're having symptoms, you need to call 911. Absolutely. Can we talk a little bit about what are the signs and symptoms of a heart attack? I think we also have a chart on that one too. Okay. The heart attack uh, warning sign. It's different for men versus women. It's like the men's um, heart attack symptoms are what we think of what think we what we think we will see mm -hmm. is chest pain um it's pain in the jaw or pain in the neck it, it, it's even back pain um arm pain or shoulder pain um my father had a massive heart attack he was he was he was uh 44 also i know it's a it's a wild wow. story it's a wild story because th two of my siblings and my father they all died at the age of 44. Mm. So praise the Lord. I am 46 years old and I was next in line. Mm. So mm. I, I that is I'm over that hump. Mm. Um, but the chest pain, the, the pain in the, the neck, the jaw, the shoulder and the shortness of breath and the nausea and vomiting are something that we're all familiar with. Like these are signs that you're you're having something is definitely wrong. You see that in men and women. But in women, there are some signs that are you wouldn't you may not even you may not have shortness of breath or chest pain. You might just be lightheaded. You might feel very tired all of a sudden or you might have indigestion that that feeling like you, you ate something and it's sitting there. It's something sitting on your heart. Like that might heart feel like burn. you're fainting, mm -hmm. like a heartburn. 
Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. So these these signs are we have to be mindful of them because they're subtle and it's a it's a someone from my church who just had um she went into cardiac arrest mm. and her fiance was with her. She survived this thing. But had she not been with someone, she may not have survived because he began CPR. Mm, wow. CPR, that's but, another thing that's so important. Uh -huh. CPR. Yeah. He began CPR. He called 911 and began CPR. And Kia is young and Kia is alive and well. Um, on her way to recovering. I mean, she, it was, it was a long, it's a long road. It's a yeah. long recovery, but um, just knowing that, you know, she just woke up. She had just woke up and stood up and um, fell back down. So that's what I mean, like um, paying attention to um, what's going on around us also. Right. Wow. And just like, you know, she, you, know you, you, you just never know. So, Stacia, um, how important is the diet, like, and, and, and according to like even age factor, like, like how does that like go to go along together, like you know, to this disease? So that's why it's important for us to um, not only get our blood pressure, make sure they check your blood pressure when you go to the doctor, mm -hmm. but checking it at home. Um, especially when you have high blood pressure already, um, because then your doctor will tell you the different lifestyle changes you need to make. Right. Um, you need to incorporate. You you may need to incorporate some more exercise. You may need to lay off some foods, um, especially the salt foods. I mean, we love salt, but especially the salty foods. Yeah. I mean, it's. Uh, it, 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 there are some um, foods that help lower blood pressure. And it's like tomatoes and tomato product uh, uh, foods. Uh, they are very beneficial in helping to lower your blood pressure. Citrus and celery and, you know, carrots and fruits and vegetables, you know, that kind of stuff that we don't really, you know, well, I love it because I don't eat meat anymore, but, you know, um, you know, Certain grains and nuts and uh, berries are very good, good things to eat to help keep your blood pressure balanced. Beans mm -hmm. and um, lentils and things like that. I mean, it's health foods, health th foods that are going to help you improve your health. Even broccoli and yogurt and you know, um, flax seeds. Everybody got to know about flaxseed, chai and flaxseed years ago. And so everybody like sprinkles that in their oatmeal. And we know oatmeal um, is a heart health, a big heart health. And oats are a big heart health food um, that, you know, can re help reduce your blood pressure. Mm -hmm. Help keep your blood, help keep your blood re uh, vessels relaxed. So that's what we want. We don't want our blood vessels to get clogged up with fat. So what foods what, what foods would you uh say is against like you know should we chill on like or just relax especially with our folks you know we love us some macaroni and cheese we love some fried chicken uh collard greens like you said we heavy on the seasonings um yeah. it's part of our culture That's true it is I mean, and I you know it's just the truth anytime you have an event you could definitely see one of those three things there it's just that simple you know. And you know, I kind of think that the event, like the once in a while type of thing, is is okay. You know, like you can yes, indulge. In moderation. It's the every day that's the problem. Like the everyday um, consuming processed foods. Um, a lot of it is is not really the salt that you add to your food. It's the salt that's already that comes with the food that the manufacturer put in the food to make it taste a certain way. So mm -hmm. reading the labels and looking at how much salt is in it before you even open up the package no, is really is really important. It is. But you know what? 
um, in our communities, um, it breaks my heart sometimes to see that we don't have fresh grocery markets. Mm -hmm. We have corner stores and they're filled with canned foods, which are processed meat. Yeah. And they are have a lot of preservatives in them. It's yeah. not good for us, and it's not good for our kids. And this is this is what this is the part that um, is racism. It it, it takes down it can take down a whole community because mm -hmm. um, the fried foods that we eat it's available at the corner stores. Mm -hmm. French fries, yeah, we we can eat this chicken strips, and you can eat it, but some people are eating this every day. Yeah, loading it with cheese, fatty meats, and the processed meats, the lunch meats, the hoagies, the bacon, the hot dogs. Yeah, <laughs> we gotta like. And it's not about like getting rid of it altogether because it's hard to change habits. Yeah, it's about yes, slowly it cutting back, slowly cutting, cutting back, back. Choosing one thing, mm -hmm. and maybe instead of eating it every day, you eat it four days a week instead of six days. A week. You know, so just like slowly cutting back and making behavior changes slowly. It has to be easy because if it's too hard, you're not going to do it, and you'll stop for a couple of days, but then you'll hop right back on it. So behavior change yeah. is a very slow process. You got to make it easy for yourself. But uh, Stacia, I know you have to get ready to go. Um, wanted to Thanks thank you all. for coming on and sharing your passion with yeah. us. We'll definitely have you back on and look forward to doing and collaborating together more in the future. Definitely. Thank, thank you, you so Stacia. much. I had a great time. And everyone, just start to take care of yourself. Just start thinking about your heart. You can't see your heart. It's on the inside, but it means the world to you. It mm. should mean the world to you. If mm. it stops working, you stop working. Mm. That's, right. the truth. That's true. Wow. That is the truth. Wow. So I know those, you know, all those French fries look great, but try a salad sometimes. Just try <laughs> it. Or a small fry. Yeah, yeah. I need to hear it. It's fine. <laughs> Just cut it down a little right. bit. Yes, yes, but yes, thanks yes, so much, yes. Stacia. Thank you, You're Stacia. So welcome. Good night. Well, right, good day. A, have a right. good day, rather. Right. Yeah. <laughs> we'll see you. All right. Have okay. a good one. All right. So let's hop into some um, news real quick. Just piggybacking on what Stacia had mentioned about us not eating enough vegetables. I had heard a news report last week that children are really not eating enough vegetables. They're drinking too much sugary beverages. In fact, they said that um, the pediatricians recommend that kids only consume about six teaspoons of added sugar a day. And one can of soda has 10 teaspoons in it. So if they're drinking one can of soda, they're already drinking twice as much as they should be drinking in a day just from the soda, not including any other snacks and whatever else they're eating. Um, and that's contributing to the diseases that we are starting to see, uh, what, what, that we have been seeing in kids that we hadn't seen in previous years, like the high blood pressure, the obesity, the diabetes that kids are having now, it's, it's a lot of it is about what they're eating. Wow. G, what you feed your grandkids? Uh, McDonald's. <laughs> I mean, listen. I mean, but that's real, though. That's right. real, and so right. I always treat like to, McDonald's. I mean, but like a treat is not a big deal. If she's right. eating that every day, that may not be the best thing for her. But a treat to McDonald's, you know, like periodically, is not going to be the cause of her demise. Right. Every day, McDonald's. You may want to look at well, what are we choosing to eat at McDonald's? Can we choose some healthier options? If that's what you got to eat because you just don't have time to cook, then that's what you got to eat. But you know, can you choose some healthier menu options that may, you know, that may promote her health? Right. You know, that's true. We don't want to kill our kids, I, you know, no. clearly. But we have to figure out, you know, what can we do to meet our needs? Like, I don't have time to cook. And I need to go to McDonald's. What do they have that may be healthier? That makes sense. I mean, I just know as the generations changed, um, you know, most of the women, they started working. So yeah. back in the day, a lot of women were staying home. They yeah. was cooking. 
It was well-rounded males, but each generation, uh, the women started elevating to the point where they was contributing. They was like the major, one of the major financial factors in the household. Yeah. So the dynamics of the household changed. So it, a lot of fast food kicked in, a lot of microwave products, yep. um, processed foods. All these things is a part of the regular everyday like lifestyle of, of food or way of living. So that's true. It, it wasn't like maybe like, you know, back in the day, like maybe the 60s, 70s, even maybe the 80s, early 90s. Now it's like. Both parents are working. Everybody working. Who got right. time to cook? I don't got time to cook. Right. So when we come home, throw that in the microwave. Now it's in the air fryer. Yeah. Uh, whatever the case may be. Yeah. So we're getting away from more healthy style lifestyles and, and healthy style food, you know, choices and just quick, quick fixes to whatever the situation is. That's true. And and and, and it kind of makes me think about what Dr. Wall said. And I'm gonna always go back to this. It's about having a plan. When yeah. you don't have a plan, you just going to just be living dilly dally and you, you know, you're not going to make the best decision. You're going to make the easiest decision. Right. And so what I like to do is bring our friend Stacy Woodson on. She, um, she's a dietitian that's come on a few times to talk about, you know, what can parents do to better plan their meals so that we're not like always relying on processed food and fast foods to feed our families because it's easy and we're just going to do what's easy because who has time to go after the hard thing? I don't have time right. for that. Or come home and make a full course meal. That's definitely not going to happen. After working eight, nine, ten hours a day. So, I mean... Even on my day off, I'm not making no food. <laughs> <laughs> if I'm off, I'm definitely not cooking because I just want to be off. Right. Like, so when am I going to cook? Right. It's just hard. It is really, really hard. Um, but I also want to mention that flu levels are trending downward, which is great. They're trending downward across the country. They're trending downward in Pennsylvania. Um, the latest looks like um, Delaware County may be looking good. I can't tell the trend, but I can just tell in Pennsylvania in general, this, the um, cases of the flu have been coming down, which is great. Now, right. I do know that Delaware County had about 6,000 cases of flu since October. There was a lot of flu that went around mm. and about 110 people died from the flu this year. So we just want to encourage people to remember flu vaccines work. Um, they help protect your body so that if you get exposed to the flu, you won't get as sick. You won't end up in the hospital. It's, just, it's the same thing we expect COVID vaccines to do. So you can still get the flu, but you just won't get as sick as you would if you didn't have any protection at all. Right. Um, right. So just want to remind you all to make sure you're up to date on all your vaccine levels. G, you got your flu shot this year for the first time. How you feel? I sure did. I've been feeling good. I, I Actually, I can honestly say I didn't get a cold. Um, my, actually my wife's sick now and I'm good. Oh, I'm good. tell Tracy um, to get better. Don't be, don't, don't be doing that. Tell her to get better. Talk, I, I turn my head like, yeah, it's, it's, <laughs> you gotta be like, this is the cough. This is the cough. Cough in your elbow. Yeah. Cough in your elbow. Yeah, it's not like that. So hopefully she feel better. Nah, she doing good though. She doing okay. better. Okay. But she didn't get her flu shot though. See, I told her to get her flu shot. See, it's like there's certain things. That as you start to get older, you you have to start incorporating into your lifestyle. Sure. Maybe when you was younger, you know, you didn't feel like you had to, but these things help. These they things do. Help. Yeah. I'm on street practitioner time. Yes, I can honestly tell say they help. Yeah. I, I mean, I was, you see how I took it. I took it like a J. <laughs> <laughs> you did. You did. Good job. Good job. Yeah. The other thing that came up is um, the CDC added. COVID vaccines as recommended vaccines for kids and for adults. So it's now a part of like the recommended schedule. This does not mean that it's it's required to go to school or it's required for anything because the states actually determine what vaccines are required for kids to go to school. The CDC just puts out the recommendations. So um, I think that's a good movement in the right direction if people aren't sure what to do you know do you really need to get it it's being recommended by the cdc they are the agency that's monitoring everything in terms of public health and so if something comes up if there are problems the cdc is going to point out they're going to let us know what to do next i don't 
I may not have faith in 100% of the government in the U.S., but the CDC, I feel, has a track record of doing the best they can in getting information to the public. So right. I rely on them for a lot of information that I share. Right, 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 right. I mean, it makes sense. And I feel like uh, COVID probably made things uh, more serious for people. So now the CDC is on everything smoking. Yeah, they, Anything they come up, any information they can give us. I feel as though like they just a reliable source. We wasn't we never talked about the CDC that much before COVID. No, we didn't have to. So but, now it's pretty much in our everyday conversation. So especially for anybody in the medical positions and phys you know, physicians and doctors mm -hmm. like yourself, like you talk about the CDC on a regular basis. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. This is the same group that said get the chicken pox. Right. Get the chickenpox vaccine, and because of that, we're not talking about chickenpox. It's the same, nope. you know, group that tells us when to get a tetanus vaccine and when to get the measles and the monkey, you know, and right. who, who who to get the monkeypox. It, it wasn't for the, it wasn't for everybody. Everybody didn't need to get a monkeypox vaccine, and so it wasn't recommended that everyone get it. But people who were high risk, the CDC identified and say high risk people, make sure you protect yourself. And get a mm -hmm. monkeypox vaccine. So we don't even barely even hear about monkeypox anymore, any doc. No, like, we haven't. No, not we like haven't. we did. Not the cases that was driving in and soaring in. Yep. So now we barely, rarely hear about monkeypox. I think cases are way down, which mm -hmm. is good, and that's what vaccines do. Right. Vaccines and public education, teaching people about how diseases are spread, so that they can change their behaviors. That is the kind of stuff that cuts down on infections, like monkeypox and COVID and flu and RSV and all that stuff from spreading. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But that's all I heard in the news. I mean, I was on vacation for a couple of days. So I wasn't really mm -hmm. like tuned in to my news sources, but that's that what I picked up. <laughs> that's, that what I, that's what I picked up. All right, good, good. All Our right. next um, clinic is going to be in Market Hook on Saturday, March 18th from 1 to 3. We're going to be at the firehouse. We're doing education and vaccines. We're playing bingo. It's going to be a fun Fun event, so come out there. Oh, yeah. Um, I don't think we have anything else. I think I'm signing time. autographs that that day too, Doc. G signing right. autographs, so come in and get your uh, t-shirts and your calendar <laughs> signed. I'm signing autographs. <laughs> <laughs> come through and get your signatures. We'll make sure that we keep the line in order. Um, God. but that's all I got. So everybody, thanks so much for tuning in, G. Thanks for you. Right. Always, always, always insightful and your Black History moment coming yes, through. You. I'm trying to get better, but thank you. Dom. You're doing good. <laughs> You're doing okay. good. All right, everybody. Thanks for tuning right, in. And we will see y'all next week right here on cmpradio.net, Wednesday at 12.15. All right, everybody. Have a good one. Yeah. I'm glad to hear you are protected. And thanks for being so honest here on Keeping It 100 because that's what we do.